Yo, what up guys? What up? What up? Guys, so in today's video, I'm going to walk you through the process on setting up a I am user account that would be used for um, API access pretty much. So I'm going to walk you through that process. We're going to create a profile, um, assign, um, give it specific access. In this case, S3 and kind of go through that process. But guys, before we get started, guys, if you could give me a follow, give me a like, man, I appreciate it. Give me a follow on Twitch as well. I'm live on Twitch every Friday nights, uh, 9 p.m. Central. And um, let's get started, guys. So like always, guys, a lot of the videos that I make, I make them based on requests. You being the viewer on what y'all what you're asking me to make. So I got a request on Hey, can you make a video on setting up a, a user, uh, I am row, um, I am profile user profile in AWS that could be used in for, uh, API purposes. And ultimately I had a video, um, that I made where I, we moved files from SharePoint and then we end up uploading these files to a uh, AWS S3 bucket. And the way I did that was I uh, pretty much used the API, right? To be able to access the S3 bucket in order to interact with the API, you will need an access key. So again, in order to have an access key, you got to create a profile, a user profile, um, kind of go through that process. So I'm going to walk you through the steps on how to create this profile, how to, how to set up access key. And ultimately you're going to, in return, you're going to get back a access key and an access secret that you need to save. And that's what you will be able to utilize in order to be able to inter interact with AWS services on what you give access to, right? So let's kind of walk through that process. So let's get started guys. So right now, again, I'm using my, my account that I use. This is my, my AWS sandbox environment. You could tell I am new strictly all testing. So I don't have anything that's serious in here. I do have another AWS account that I use for, uh, for production work, but this is my sandbox environment. So the first thing go, go to I am Rome. So just kind of click on it and find it somewhere. You know, I'm going to the, um, to, uh, I am module. Uh, identity and access management, you know, those of you who may not be aware of what it is. So next we're going to go to users. So we're going to ultimately create a new user account. And I already have one. This is the one that people saw in some of my videos that I used. Um, I think I showed it, uh, once or twice in one of my videos. So we're going to create a new one. So let's kind of walk through that process. We're going to go to add a user and I'm going to just call this API user test, right? Um, again, keep in mind, it will tell you, let's make this a bit bigger so everybody can see, you know, what's, what's valid, what's not valid. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, I believe spaces are not allowed. So that's why I, I kind of put everything together. I'm not, I do not want this enabled, right? I do not want this enabled. If you're going to be using this strictly for API, like you're going to have some code run in, some sort of on-prem locally or wherever, some kind of some server somewhere. Um, you want it to be for that purpose only. I, if this, if this account is going to be used for the console as well, console being AWS console, which is what you're, you're seeing now, um, then yeah, you would enable this. But in this case, we're not using it. We do not want it. I want it to have that kind of access. So I'm not going to check that box, leave it unchecked. Okay. So the next thing is there's a few options, right? One option could be if you're, if you already have an account, um, that has these specific permissions, we could copy it, right? I could copy it from this specific user, but we're going to just assume you don't have one. So you're going to walk through the process from scratch. So in my case, we're going to search for S3 full, which would be this guy S3 full access. Now, um, 
I'm doing S3 full access because in, in, in my scenario, right, in my case, I would be dealing with many different buckets that ultimately I want this API to have access to, right? To be able to delete, create, etc. That's what full means. Full means you could create new buckets, you could create, um, you know, you'd be able to read, delete files from each bucket, etc. If you're trying to be more specific, like create some sort of API key, um, that for example, is only going to be very specific to a bucket. You could do that, but you would have to, you wouldn't apply this policy. We would ultimately create your own policy. There's the option to create your own policy. It'll be very similar to what we have here, but we would be more specific, right? Under the S3, instead of the wildcard star, we will specify which bucket we want to have access to. And then we'll be able to provide more details of uh, what kind of access that they have, right? Is it, is it going to have read access only? Is it going to have, you know, access to, um, to create, like, you know, and so on? So you're able to customize it. So that's something to keep in mind. I'm doing full because I want this API key to access all buckets, be able to delete, upload, whatever, every file. But if that's not the case, you do have to customize, create a policy that's more specific. If you want a video that's more specific to that, let me know, I'll make a video. If not, hopefully this video should be good enough. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and select this policy. Now keep in mind though too guys that um, if your API key is going to be used for other stuff, so kind of give an example, let's say I'm going to use it for glue as well. Um, like in my production environment, my API key is used for S3, uh, Lambda, um, glue, what else? Um, there's a few other services that it's used for. So ultimately, if you're going to be using it for other services, like a good example would be for glue, you know, you're going to want to, um, start execute a job in glue, right? Um, I think I have it for, uh, EC2 instance where I have the job run. It would actually start stuff, but EC2 instance at a specific time. And then later on that day, it shuts down that instance, ultimately save cost. I don't need that server running 24 seven. I would just, I have a schedule, I have a, a tool that ultimately, you know, is scheduling these jobs. And in this case, it's calling the um, AWS um, um, command line interface to start the service and turn it off. But again, keep in mind, if you that's what you need it for, then you got to make sure to add those kind of services to it. Um, and I believe in my case would be this guy right here, AWS glue service row. But again, for this example, I'm only going to apply that one permission, which is S3, because that's what I need it for. So, but if you need more, just go ahead and click on it, right? And add all the permissions that you do need. Okay, let's hit next. Um, as you can see, it'll tell us which permissions we added. Again, remember none. We don't want a, a console password because this pro, this user account does not have access to the AWS console. We're going to hit create user, let it create. Once it finished creating, uh, we're going to go ahead and click on the profile, right? So let's click on the profile. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the security credentials. Now there's a few things on here and keep in mind, you know, multi-factor authentication. So this is more, if you are actually are creating accounts that like uh, to the, to the console, AWS console. Um, yeah, I would strongly recommend, uh, multi-factor authentication just adds another level of security and makes it, you know, more harder for people that shouldn't be logging into your account. Right. But ultimately we're going, we're coming down to where it says access key. This is what we're going to be. We need to see right now it says no access key. So what we're going to do, we're going to create an access key. Now this is something new. This was not here previously. So they added this. I'm not sure when they added this, but it must've been the, in, within the last I don't know, nine months maybe or so, something like that. So either way, um, ultimately it kind of is asking you what, how are you going to use it? What purpose, right? In what manner, which way? So like if, if I were to click on command line interface, it kind of gives you other uh, recommendations. 
like to use. Um, you know, in this case, it's ultimately using the IM uh, user and things of that nature. If you do local code, it's pretty much saying, okay, well, there's other, you know, there's another option to IM identity. So there's a few ways that you can use your IDE to kind of connect to it. That's for more like local testing uh, without having to need to create um, the um, access key. But it still allows you to, right? So even though it tells you whatever, you can still go ahead and create it. But you give you recommendations um, at the end of the day. In my case, I'm going to be clicking on application running outside of AWS. So for for example, if you're going to be running something um, within AWS, like let's say Lambda, you're going to put deploy some Python code in Lambda that's going to be running. Lambda does not need any access secrets or access keys in order to uh, commun like access S3 buckets and some of the other ones. It uses the IM row. The IM row gives you all of that access. So there's no need for it, right? If you're going to be running internally. Now, if you're, you, if it's running external, let's say you have a server in DigitalOcean, on-prem, Azure, you know, some other resource, again, outside AWS, then, you know, um, that's where your secret and your keys come in and, you know, you that's what you will end up using. So either way, once I can click on application running outside of AWS, you know, um, we'll click next. So you can add tags. I'm gonna leave it blank, but ultimately tag just kind of identify where your key, you know, with, you know, what some kind of description. That's all it is. Uh, create access key. So once you do this, I'm gonna click on show. You gotta save this, save your key and your secret key. Okay, once I hit done, you cannot access this anymore. It's, it's, think of it as being lost unless you save the copy of it, right? So you could go ahead and download it, download CSV file, right? So we go ahead and open this up. Um, you'll see, right? We have our ID and our key. Save this file, store it somewhere safe. Um, and yeah, because again, once you, once I click done, there's no getting that information back. You're gonna ultimately just have to create a whole new uh, profile if that if that's the case. But this is it, guys. Like once once you get your secret and your key, this is what you're gonna be using. This is what I used um, in one of my previous videos um, that I believe I think I had it because I was like looking through it. So this is one of my previous video Python SharePoint file to AWS S3. And as you can see in here in my config file, I have access key ID and, ac and secret access key. And that's pretty much where that these keys would pretty much get entered in. That just for my example, but if you're integrating with AWS through the API, like services through the API, you're going to be using this through all of that process, right? So again, guys, not too bad, pretty straightforward. You do need access to the AWS console, which is number one. If you don't have access, ultimately, obviously you're gonna have to get with somebody that does, you know, admin in your organization, um, then they should be able to create this for you and provide you the keys at least. And then from there you can use it in your application and, and so forth. So again, guys, hopefully this helped out. This was a request from a user. Um, again, most of my videos, I'm going to say not all, but the majority of my videos come from viewers like you requesting. So again, I can't get to all the videos, all, all the requests, but you know, I'm going to try to do the best as I can to help out, provide videos, provide some sort of, uh, make my channel be some good, a good resource that you could come to, right? And actually learn something. That's, that's my plan, right? That's my goal. So hopefully guys, this helps out again, guys, appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Give me a follow, give me a like and peace.